Hello guys and welcome to my channel. My name is Jesper Offersen and on this channel here we are talking about skincare and uh, we don't use a filter. So if you saw me on the high street, this is actually how I look. So today we are going to talk about a sunscreen and therefore I do not have a sunscreen on at the moment because we're going to test it in a little while and that's why I maybe look a little bit different than if you saw me on the high street because usually when I'm on the high street I would be wearing some sort of sunscreen and um, that maybe might be a little bit sort of a shiny because usually that is the issue with sunscreen, isn't it? It's always uh, rather shiny somehow, one way or another, or it's very chalky or whatever. So today we are going to talk about a sunscreen from Nivea and uh, they make a lot of uh, sunscreen really. So we are talking about this one here. And we are talking about this one because I heard on the radio that uh, apparently this uh, one is a really a good one or that is at least the one that uh, the uh, consumer uh, magazine here in the UK which have uh, said is really really good. It's a very good buy and their test panel really really liked it for all sort of uh, things that they were asked to note about. So uh, we have uh, the magazine here and that is uh, the Witch magazine and we're not going to talk about cars because I don't know a lot about cars apart from that they can look nice and some don't look nice. But uh, we are talking about sunscreens today and uh, when we look in the magazine we can see that here we have uh, four sunscreens and they have been tested uh, by the uh, Witch magazine and uh, all these four here they were apparently a uh, good ones so uh, I thought well the one that uh, you mainly can get sort of uh, internationally I assume is uh, this one here the Nivea one so I thought let's test that one what they said about it is that it's really good for the um, SPF that is uh, in it. And what they mean by that is that sometimes when they're testing these sort of uh, sunscreens, some of those sunscreens, they will not live up to uh, the mark uh, on the bottle. So uh, if it says uh, maybe SPF 30 or 50 or something like that, it might give something that is uh, considerably uh, lower. And that is, of course, not really great. Particularly, it's not great because a lot of people, uh, as I understand it, are not using enough sunscreen. And uh, that is uh, basically, I think, because they don't want to be too greasy in the skin of course some is a little better than nothing but it's still you need to be really careful that you're actually uh, knowing what you're putting on your skin how much is the SPF on your skin so uh, this one here if you apply the amount that you must apply and that is about 1.25 milliliter for a face like mine the neck inclusive and the ears so uh, there you would be getting an SPF of uh, 30 in this case here or oh, that is what I think and that is what they say in the magazine but it actually it just says 30. It doesn't say SPF 30, but of course it is an SPF of a 30. So another thing that is interesting about this one here is that it's called Protect and Moisture. And it says uh, up here, and it actually says down here that it gives you 48 hours of uh, moisturing. And uh, I would say I would not wear this stuff here for 48 hours and I don't really think that anyone will do that. But uh, that is, I think, just to say that this is something that is really, really moisturizing uh, your skin. And uh, when it does that, it might feel rather greasy, you might think. But actually, what they say, and you can see that in the magazine as well, and I can, of course, not show it because you have to pay for this sort of a magazine. But just a quick note, it looks like this, and there is this test here. And what it says is that actually it's really good for greasiness, and also they say it's really good for tackiness. And uh, that is nice to know because you don't really want to buy something that is uh, tacky or make you look tacky, do you? I think they are talking about that, how it feels on the skin. So uh, this is a UVA and it's UVB and it's UVA in a circle. So we know that lives up to the uh, EU recommendations and that sort of thing. And it's a uh, water resistant. So it has this sort of a spray thing. So it has this uh, nozzle uh, thing here. So uh, you spray it on and uh, that is really good for your body, but it's not so great for your face. And the thing is that uh, they of course say that you should not uh, spray this uh, stuff here directly onto your face. So you should always put it on your hands and then uh, apply it on the skin. So that is what we are going to do today. And we will be using uh, this spoon again, as we have been using it many times. And as I often say, there is only one milliliter in this one here. So we actually need a little bit more than what is in this spoon here and maybe one day I will find a spoon that is 1.25 milliliters. I think I'll be looking out for one at least. So I'll just uh, shake it up a little bit because uh, this one is uh, relatively liquidy so I just kind of like I uh, like to distribute all the stuff that are in the product uh, evenly. So uh, we just uh, give it a shake. We don't want to put a lot of air into it. That's that's not it. Just to kind of like give it a, a gentle shake. And then of course as I said we have uh, this sort of a 
thing here. And uh, that uh, means that it's really difficult to get it into uh, the spoon here. So what I of course do is that I will open it. It might be really good for the body, but it's not that great for uh, when you're going to put it on your face. So we just uh, add a little bit here. And I said this was just be about one milliliter. I tried to give it a little bit of a top and then I can just um, put this uh, screw thing on again, this uh, nozzle, because then I can just in my hand give a little bit more. But uh, let's just uh, see uh, with this amount here. So it is uh, rather liquid, so uh, it's a little bit uh, problematic to use. Let me just give it a little bit more here, kind of like, like that. So here we go in the face. And it does have a perfume. And it also has um, this um, benzene alcohol in it as well, which is a preservative, but it is also a fragrance. So if you don't like fragrances, maybe uh, this is not for you. There are other stuff in it that can be uh, problematic as well. So up in the forehead as well. Try not to get too much into the hair. So like that. And uh, it, I would say this sort of a fragrance or perfume is a rather like... Um, you kind of like feel like that like you are walking bottle gum or something like that. It's really like a sort of a classic Nivea beach sort of um, smell. I don't really like it actually. So, and well, I put it on my eyelid, yes, but uh, of course you should uh, be careful not to get it into your eyes. So like that. I have tried this uh, for a couple of days now and what I would say is that it kind of like it uh, did not annoy my eyes as such. It didn't sort of sting my eyes or something like that. But it's more like uh, as the day went on, it sort of like uh, made my eyes a little bit um, annoyed with the wind, for example. So kind of like when you have uh, something that is a little bit oily and it starts to go into your eyes, it might not sting your eyes, but it sort of like it irritated the eye a little bit. So for that matter, I would say that uh, maybe it is not something you should put on your eyelids. So. This one here is, um, I don't have a, a moisturizer underneath, so um, this uh, will just be uh, the moisturizer, kind of like, and the um, UV filter all in one. And um, I would say it did sort of like uh, sink in relatively easy, but um, I mean, still it makes you a little bit um, sort of uh, greasy. You can feel you have it on during the day, but it's not like, it's not really, really bad as some sunscreens. They can be like really, really bad and uh, make your skin shine to high heaven. And I would say it, it doesn't really do that. Now maybe um, where I am, uh, it's not that hot, but it's still underneath all this sort of light here that I have here. Uh, it might be that I am a little bit uh, more um, sweaty in my face than I would be if I just put this stuff here on in the morning. So if you are in a place where it's really hot and humid, it might be, and I guess that's uh, the case with a lot of sunscreens, difficult to put on unless you have some sort of uh, air conditioning when you put it on. So I would say, yes, this uh, stuff here, it does uh, make my skin shine. And yes, it is of course also for the neck, but um, maybe we didn't have exactly uh, 1.25 milliliters, but as such, it is for the neck as well. So we just uh, kind of like put it a little bit down like that. And what sort of uh, UV filters are in here? Well, it is uh, the usual ones from modern uh, sunscreens. So that will be some of these uh, modern filters, but there are also some of these old fashioned filters. And uh, the thing is that uh, which uh, they say that this is a really good uh, sunscreen. However, if you are asking uh, the um, the same sort of magazine in Denmark where I come from, then um, there is uh, one called Tink, and that means a think. And um, they will say that a product uh, like this one here, it contains a 2 hexacylate, and therefore they do not like it, and they will give it a, a low rating. So regardless of maybe it might be sinking in well and all that sort of thing, then they will say that, well, actually, when it has uh, this sort of a salicylic acid a derivative in it, we will not give it a high rating. So uh, that's the way that they are thinking in Denmark. So uh, for that matter, this is not something I would say I will be using as such because I have one I already use and it doesn't have any sort of a etyl hexosalicylate in it or any sort of a salicylates in it really. And that is uh, the one from uh, La Roche-Posay that I've been talking about uh, before. So uh, this one here, 
if I didn't have uh, other options, yes, I would use this one here. But now that I do have an, another option, I will not uh, use this one here. So, uh, and that is uh, purely because of the, I mean, the perfume as well. It's not because I think that anything with perfume, like, oh, just stay away. But uh, as such, it's kind of like, I don't like the perfume. And I think that it that doesn't really need to be a perfume in a product like this. And I think when you are kind of like uh, smelling like uh, bubble gum, I think maybe that's fun when you are on the beach. But uh, this stuff here is, uh, actually something that people are using on a daily basis it might be that if you're running around town you might not like to smell like bubble gum so uh, yes it is a, a little bit uh, greasy uh, in my hands and um, it will of course take a little while before something like this will be sinking in really well but um I would say it, it does um, make uh, the skin look a little bit greasy. It might not be overpoweringly uh, greasy, but um, yes, it um, it does definitely, when you use uh, the correct amount, I would say that this uh, comes off as uh, being uh, a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, too greasy for, for my taste. But um, of course you can always add a little bit of silica and that is uh, what I normally do when I have a, a sunscreen that is uh, a, bit, uh, a little bit, uh, too greasy for my taste and uh, that is just something I do just before I put it on you can also powder the silica on your face first and then uh, add the sunscreen afterwards and then give it a little bit uh, afterwards as well but just be sure that you're not removing uh, the sunscreen when you are dabbing something on afterwards that is a uh, really a no-no to do that so uh, yes I would say after a little while it did annoy my eyes slightly but it wasn't something that was really really bad it was just like it felt a little bit like having something oil around uh, my eyes and that will just annoy the the eyes and um, apart from that I would say that um, it sort of um, sinks in relatively well uh, at least compared to other sort of a sunscreen so for that matter yes uh, I would say that it's kind of like uh, okay and uh, that is uh, what they are saying uh, in the magazine as well what are people are actually saying is that they are saying here um, it says uh, they are really giving a good marks for how easy it is uh, absorbable and uh, its lack of a greasiness. So um, yes, I would say when you're looking at a sunscreen, it will always sort of like being a little bit greasy. And um, I think this is not bad. And as I just sit for a little while, it, it does sink in better and better i will say that it, it 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 does actually do that and it feels actually it feels nice on my skin it's just a little bit uh, problematic around the eye area after a couple of hours particularly if you have a lot of wind in your face and stuff like that as i had today when i was out walking so uh, yes i would say it does make my skin a little bit greasy but as such otherwise it does actually feel a little bit nice on this skin i would say if you're using this product here then i would not use a moisturizer underneath because then it would simply be uh, too much so uh, yes will i use that uh, product again well if i did not have an another choice or something like that yes i um, wouldn't mind using it as such for how it feels on this skin but it will a little bit annoy my eyes and i would say that i don't like the perfume and i don't like that it contains a uh, it's too so it's silent so uh, yeah that is up to you if you like that sort of things i don't like it so uh, that was my verdict on this product here i will not as such be buying it again so if you like to see more of this sort of videos please subscribe to the bell and do all the things you must do not to be notified when i upload more of this sort of videos. Thank you for watching. See you. Bye.